Hello everyone and welcome to Office Hours. Uh, I'm Ben Brownlee for Boris Effect and this is Office Hours. So Office Hours is our slightly more informal uh, live stream where we just sort of spend spend about an hour looking at a different topic and uh, yeah, just, just having a bit of fun. Um, now I'm doing this pretty much solo, so if there are any tech questions, uh, or tech problems, uh, please drop them into chat straight away uh, and I can uh, and try and fix them. We are basically uh, running a new new technique uh, to try and see if we can uh, we can get this system going nice and spicily. All right, well, we are going to be looking at keying today. Um, the you know the topic is uh, why your keys look bad. A uh, little bit spicy, which uh, which I like, um, and we're, we're going to go through a, a few different different things and a few different ideas uh, and a few different shots. Uh, but at any time, if there's any questions about uh, what you want to see, or if there's a, a you know a question about one of the techniques, then do ask them in chat, and I will be only too happy to uh, to take a look. Alrighty, okay, I'm going to uh, assume that everything is looking good. And I'm just going to move into uh, my first shot. We're going to start off actually fairly, uh, you know, fairly um, lightly, I think, um, just with this little shot here, um, because this this is basically going into my my first little um, tip, which is always use the best tool for a particular job. Uh, one of the things I, I see a lot. Uh, especially when it comes to keying stuff over black, is that people are very, very keen to uh, to just come in and use uh, just a blend mode. Uh, let's see if this works. Hey, little face cam. Face cam works as well. Um, yeah, so if we, we take a look at, uh, at this shot on the right, so like normally if you're just keying stuff in over black or mixing stuff in over black, um, like a, a, a blend mode, is often the, the sort of first place that people go to. And this can look really, really good. It look, looks absolutely fine. Um, you know, this, this uh, we get to, to see through the black, but you know, there's, there's other ways of doing this. Um, one of the ways that I like to, to do it instead is to find a way of, uh, you know, basically using the luminance channel as a uh, as a key. Now this isn't pulling a luma key. A luma key's a little bit different, but this is, you know, basically shifting the the channels over from uh, being luminance and, and putting that directly into into alpha. Now we're we're in After Effects at the moment, but there are actually, you know, lots of different uh, ways of of doing this depending on your host system. Uh, in After Effects, I think it's, uh, is it set channels or shift channels? Let's go shift channels. There we go. Yeah, so one of the ways that we can do this is just to sort of take the alpha from, from the luminance. And this gives us a slightly different look. Uh, but it's, it's actually kind of keying this out in a, in a sort of similar sort of way. Uh, we don't get like that sort of big push because we're not blending these pixels together in the same way but what we are doing is making another way of creating this creating this transparency in here which is great for you know well like a little bubble here but we'll also have a look at flames in a sec now the only thing that i don't like about uh shift channels is it's a little bit of a slow boy uh, one of my favourite things uh, with with After Effects and the newest version of After Effects is it showing you the render times of how long everything's get to render, so um, so you can see what's kind of slowing you down. Uh, the other one I've got in here already is my BCC Plus composite filter, uh, and this is kind of come in here. This is doing basically doing the same thing. I'm using the luminance to create the mat up here but we've got a few more different options than we had with just using the uh, the sort of straight shift channels technique because we can we can come in and we can 
use the, uh, the black and white clipping here. Just it's it's basically it's a uh, like a, a built-in levels command really to sort of bring this back in. Um, and this this technique is something that I use a lot for uh, for flames and for smoke because so often you get um, really nice actually uh, flames and stock footage. Uh, let's have a little look here. Yeah, you get really nice flames and stock footage, but when you when you sort of try to composite these on top of each other, uh, you either get well. This is with the left hand sides with the Luma key, so you either get like dark nonsense going around there, or one of the things that I see a lot, and I'm not going to say it drives me up the wall, but I kind of wish I didn't see it as much uh, as I do is people just using like a straight up uh, straight up blend mode to to key out uh, flames because this this actually isn't how uh, flames are reacting to the light at all uh, so whenever I'm watching TV or uh, unfortunately sometimes movies as well um, it's a real giveaway uh, of when they've they've just sort of slapped a uh, a blend mode on is that you can sort of see that everything is let's go straight to the screen there you can see that everything's just a little bit brighter than it should be and the flames are a little bit more transparent than they should be which is a you know a little bit upsetting um i get upset by the you know the smallest things it's lovely uh, the other way of doing it obviously is to use the uh, that composite thing again which is the little trick of just tra uh, taking the uh, the lumens value and pumping that into the uh, into the alpha channel and with with this fire we actually don't really need to do much else you can you can sort of see if I, if I hover anywhere around here um, like take take a little look at this like if this was real fire you're not going to be able to see this sort of uh, you know black edge sort of popping in let's zoom in on that yeah you're, you're probably not going to be able to see that background shining through as much as we as much as we got it here so don't do that um like the other the other way we've got here by pumping the um pumping the, the luma into the alpha we get a much nicer and more realistic look to our to our fire here the other thing that we've got and this is something that i'm going to talk about actually quite a lot um is about how we sort of match the uh, match the foreground and the background and how we match the colors together so the other thing that we uh well the other other one that i've got in here the other uh filter that i've got in here is this pre-malt filter and what this pre filter is going to do is it's going to help to, to sort of figure out what's going on with those slightly semi-transparent pixels that are going along around the flames. Um, and currently, they're pre-multiplied with black because if we have a little remember, this was obviously shot on black. Now, the consequence of this is that if we just keep it shot on black or keep it uh, pre-multiply with black as it is we can get slightly darker edges and we're, we're missing some of that really nice heat that we get through the uh, through the fire so it looks a little bit tame now if I do pre malt here I can choose which color to pre malt it with and like currently if we, if we pre malt it with black you know that's that's where we're, we're getting it's kind of like eh, back where we were before but just using the BCC uh, pre malt filter, we can come in and we can change what's happening to those, just those semi transparent pixels and just add a little bit of color into those. So I can find something that, that matches where my mood is going to. And you see, it's not affecting anything that's completely keyed out. And if we take a little look, uh, let's zoom this back to. 150. We take a a little look at the the two different ways of doing this. So you've got the 
uh, you know, just the, the basic blend mode method of sorting out stuff over black over on the left hand side. And over on the right hand side, you've got the uh, the the Luma as alpha with pre -malt. So that's using BCC plus, uh, BCC plus composite plus uh, BCC pre -malt. But of course, if you don't have um, a BCC plus composite, you can uh, come in and do that with, with other channel shifting things. It's just you might have to do a little bit of work beforehand, just getting the color correction in to try and figure that stuff out. But if you don't have a pre -malt, it's going to be trickier to to find that nicer that nicer flame color. And I kind of like that. So that's my uh, that's my first office hours uh, tip for keying. We're going to be looking at a uh, a lot of green screen stuff after now uh, in a second. But if you've got any questions, uh, drop them in chat, and we'll have a have a little look, and I'll find my next shot. Now, obviously, there's a uh, little bit of a delay between me asking if anyone's got any questions and the questions actually coming, so I will be a little bit patient. So let's have a little look here as well. I'll wait for uh, wait for the hard drives to wake up on this one. There we go. This is where I might think about actually just dropping that quality down a little bit there. Uh, I fall into the trap again. Or obviously of working with uh, ultra HD uh, footage on a uh, on a stream that is definitely not going to be showing at ultra HD. But here we go. All right. So uh, here's my um, we're gonna we're gonna be looking at green screen now. Take a little uh, take a little look at a green screen, and I'm gonna say that like in the, in the years that I've been doing this sort of stuff um i've keyed many 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 hundreds possibly thousands of shots but it's it's been getting easier and easier to get great looking results um as the sort of technology has gotten better not just in terms of software but definitely in terms of software but also in terms of the uh, the cameras uh, that people are using like when when you're shooting at you know, very, very highly compressed SD, it's really tricky to get fine hair detail, even though everyone really wants to get fine hair detail still. Um, so there's, you know, there's there's always been lots of different kind of tricks to, to kind of cheating some of that stuff. Um, and a lot of these old techniques, you know, they, they still persist today for, for, for better or worse. Um, I'm going to look at some of these and, and sort of maybe uh, not debunk, but sort of be a bit more realistic about where we are today with the, uh, the camera hardware, the codec hardware and the, the uh, keying software uh, and just, you know, how we have to do a little bit less uh, to get a great looking result, but also how small details can, um, can make big changes. Uh, let's, I'm going to make a copy of this one and I'm going to get rid of everything here and just basically reset everything. I'm going to get rid of all of this nonsense. There we go. Cool. So that's, that's how the original shot looked. Uh, I'll also get rid of all of this as well. Boom. Cause this is how original background looks. Now this is a fairly, um, a fairly clean background. I say fairly clean. It's actually a very clean background. The only thing we've got, we've got, if we zoom in a little bit, zoom in a little bit here. You know, there's a few creases that we've got going on. Um, if we look at the compression on it, you know, we've got a bit of noise in there as well. Uh, it's nothing too horrible. But I would, I would probably want to denoise this first. Uh, we're not going to do that today. But this is something that I would definitely do. Uh, grain management is a is a different topic or a topic for another day. 
um, but it definitely plays into uh, plays into this so i mean the, the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm, I'm just going to key key this uh and you know your, your host is going to have tons of different keys uh you know keys are are all over the place now um if we're working in after effects we've got key light if we're working in uh premiere we've got uh what's called ultra key if you're working in resolve you've got the uh regular resolve key and the uh, 3d key and you know they all give uh you know a pretty pretty decent result and we'll, we'll have a little look at this and we'll sort of talk about that how you can use any key plus some other little tri uh, techniques uh so a key light just going to do a, a quick sample in here uh and we'll come into what we're going to come into the screen map take a little look zoom in a little bit there and what i'm going to try to do here is i'm trying to uh keep in as much hair detail as possible whilst also getting a clean key So if I roll everything, like do do my my black clip first, try and roll some of that clipping in here. Now, uh, and come back in after that and do the white. There we go. Uh, oh, there's still a little bit of grey here. So, the temptation is to come in and do a bit more white there. Look a little round. Oh, uh, we've got a little bit of black up uh white poking through in there but uh, it's all right so this is this is how i see a lot of people handle keys I try and do everything all at once let's see let's see the result i mean let's have a, have a little look i mean it's not it's not bad the uh, hair's a little bit ratty Uh, we've got, you know, nice, uh, nice big marks around the edges. You know, uh, key lines around the edges. So it's not bad. But it's not. It's not great. Let's see what happens with motion blur as well. So let's just identify all the issues that we've got going on. So yeah, motion blur looks a bit, a little bit, uh, as well. That's not particularly nice. Uh, let's see what the intermediate result is. So this is the, the result without spill suppression. And we've got a little bit of a uh, little bit of green going in, but I don't mind that. Like any of that spill, easy. But the the common yeah, the common um thing that people try to do when they're first approaching their, their keys is to to do too much so if we come in like and you just try and get everything like really really tight we we'll try and you know try and get rid of the the sort of key lines around the mat lines around there so you sort of key a bit harder and you end up mucking about with the hair going oh okay well the hair's knackered now but at least everything else looked pretty good so obviously the uh, the thing that most people do at this point is they would come in and do a second hair pass so come in basically just do a uh, like another little segment which is just looking just looking for the hair and you sort of break things up by layers and this is um oh it's a, it's a, a very common technique and it's a technique that i use um use a lot i used to use it more uh, and the reason i don't use it as much is something we're going to come to in a minute but here's yeah so this this is this is the basic idea of it is to come in and split everything up so we've got one which is our our sort of core mat and then we bring in details 
afterwards. Very common. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something else instead. I'm going to use a different tool. I'm going to use the uh, Primat Studio. So the Continuum Primat Studio. And this this works in the same same sort of way, really. We're doing doing one click just to do the auto analyze, and that's going to give us give us this. Uh, we have a little look at what that's doing. Well, let's look at the primary map. I was going to say it looks pretty clean, but you know when when we zoom in, obviously there's a little bit of uh, of the noise coming in lovely so before i come in and do anything else actually one of my my first tips my first tips one of my uh, my next tips i should say uh is to come in and just say only key what you need so don't try and do too much basically with with one key and this could be doing the you know the core map plus little mats for for the other details uh or it could be just a simple case of coming in and remembering to use garbage masks first um so we can just uh, here we can just turn on like a let's bring in our final composite here yeah here i can and sort of just come in and use a crop just to limit this and that, that little crop works fine uh, if she if she doesn't do too much movement what we don't want to do obviously is cut into our uh, our person that we're keying and you can see I cut that off not good let's bring that over there and let's see how that is going just quickly go through and that's, you know, that's limited uh, what we have to do and what we have to try and clean up by uh, just over a half because we're not interested in any of the little problems that are going in in this top right-hand corner. So we can even bring this down probably. And we're not interested at all in anything that's going on over here. So um, as we'll see a little bit later on in the uh, in the stream, I've got other other shots where we've got lights directly in the shot, and that's you know that's not an issue here. So long as you shoot it, knowing that those lights are going to be in the shot, uh, and you've got a, a solution for dealing with them afterwards, and it's not an issue. Uh, the other thing that I would do when uh, when working on this is to not look at our primary but they do work uh, but they but actually to look at things in the mat status because mat status simplifies everything else uh, completely so it gives us basically three colors so you have white where everything is completely opaque black where everything's completely transparent and gray where everything is either or sorry i should say neither completely opaque or completely transparent so this means that we can come in and just sort of basically go blub 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 and draw little areas interactively in the viewer uh, for where we want our uh, you know where we, where we want our uh, background to be cleaned up I can even change this to rectangle and just sort of see if that's going to make a bit of a difference. Yep, it does. So once I've got the, the background sorted, I can start to clean up the foreground. Uh, now we do have a question in chat from Dane. Uh, and Dane says, Primat Interactive UI controls in HitFilm Pro do not work. Uh, in Vegas Pro they work, but in HitFilm they don't work. Uh, okay, we'll have to take a, a little look at that um yeah that's that's the thing with with some of these ofx uh plugins like the the ofx hosts uh work slightly differently 
you know, be between hosts. So uh, most features, we, we try to get everything working uh, 100%, but if if we don't, you know, that's usually put up in the uh, in the known issues thing, but I will I will certainly have a look for that, Dane. Uh, yeah, where were we? Oh yeah, we're just gonna clean up the foreground and do the same here. Actually, there's just only a little bit here that I need to clean up. What I don't wanna do, uh, and this is, again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier, is you don't wanna try to do too much. You don't want to sort of over, let's uh, actually come in and maybe clean this up here. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to sort of fall into the trap of making something over clean because that's when we end up with those, that horrible sort of uh, uh, spindly hair strands. So we're around about here, like when everything's looking pretty good, I'm going to change my, my mat from mat status into uh, looking at the primary map because now we can see whether we're keeping in that hair or not. I'll find a, an issue. I, I always get very, very hung up on, on hair because I think that's, that's the thing that, that actually completely makes or breaks a, um, uh, makes or breaks composite, just like small, small little details. So I clean up a little bit more there. I think this is looking, it's looking all right for a first pass. I should look at how that works in context. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm looking at, I'm looking here for a couple of things. And this is, this is a uh, part of my little checklist. I'm looking for motion blur and how it's dealing with the motion blur. This motion blur looks ugly, but we'll fix it in a little bit. But does this motion blur look uglier than, and let's just save this so that if this all goes wrong, it's all gonna go right. I'm gonna clean this, try and clean this motion blur up. Ugh, that didn't look good. Just try and clean up just a little bit of the motion blur. Ugh, that didn't look good either. So going back in and like trying to trying to get too much of the green out, trying to get every little section of the green out, especially when we're looking at motion blur, is not the right way to go. Or I should say seldom the right way to go because you end up with, again, just like these little sticks uh, for fingers. Instead of actual fingers, when it's keyed out, the fingers just become like really, really skinny, like little chipolatas uh, and not like real real fingers at all. Okay, so for people who have just joined us, uh, this is Boris Effects Office Hours. Uh, I'm Ben Brownlee. Uh, we are looking at uh, keying and different sort of keying techniques. Uh, very informal uh, little stream. Uh, if you've got your questions, ask them in chat. Uh, if you want to see anything in particular, ask it in chat as well. Um, we're, we're just sort of taking a, a quick look at this keying shot now. Um, we looked at how to, how to uh, deal with fire and stuff shot on, on black a little bit earlier. So, uh, that was quite fun, but let's carry on with this. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay. So the next, the next little bit, uh, that we're, we're trying to do, and this is probably the most important thing is once we've got our key in a, a decent shape, we don't want to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Uh, the next thing to do is actually see how much we can get away with just by changing colors up. So if I come, let's come over to something not too, not too bad. Let's come over here, zoom in. You can see we've got a ton of uh, green spill coming in. Now this is even with like an actual, you know, a good sort of separation between, um, between the screen and the, uh, and the subject, the actress we're working with, you know, we're still going to get a little bit of spill 
um, and that's usually going to become uh, usually going to come actually in the semi-transparent areas which is what we're seeing with the hair um, or with the motion blur stuff um, we're not seeing too much spill from from light being reflected back onto the um, onto the subject maybe a little bit over on this side so how do we deal with spill well again most keyers do have uh, some way of, of dealing with with spill um, and Primat Studios no no exception we have like a spill spill thing this is taking my uh, spill replacement out to, to zero uh, so this is the actual spill that we're getting through let's hide that UI for a sec and we could muck about with things like a spill sponge and try to you know try to get rid of stuff like that um, I'm not going to bother with any of that stuff in fact with the the regular spill I'm just going to turn my my spill mode to uh, to none because I don't want this uh, spill actually doing anything for me right now because I'm much more interested in in different ways of dealing with spill we got two two ways basically uh, we've got doing spill with light wrap or we've got the secondary spill remover and for each of these if you're working with uh, continuum you'll have these as separate effects so regardless of what key you're using it uh, with you can always do this sort of stuff so we can just use spill remover just turn that on and off just so you can see what that's doing and that's just sucking all of that green out of the way <laughs> lovely so that's much nicer we take a little look let's uh, actually come back along here somewhere let's see where the the motion blur was the area with the hand where are you around there somewhere yep so we take a little look there like even though it's still a little bit noisy or quite a bit noisy we're not having to even think about trying to key out that green because we can get a much more realistic uh, result just by sorting out the color in it let's fit that in let's just um i'm going to do a quick playback on that while we take a little look at chat see if there's anything else coming in um if you're liking what you're seeing uh hit the thumbs up button for me just to just to see if we do have uh have people being nice and active in here uh, if you've got any questions so far or you want to see something in particular just also just drop it in chat for us so we've got we've got something now uh, which is kind of working for me um, I, th I, I sort of like this but it's it's still not like actually working a hundred percent and we could go in and we could sort of start to to think about little small bits and you know maybe we'll bring in a little bit more hair or do do something else there um but i think a lot of that like is just a, a bit of a, a waste of time in the uh in the first instance because you're going to get a much more uh better and solid result by coming in and thinking about colors again so we took a look at the uh, the spill remover my next stage is to try to think about what's going on with the uh, the background and the foreground and trying to match those together and ideally this is something that actually would have been thought about uh when we were uh or, or when you were filming or when your footage was filmed like here uh, we've got a foreground and a background that obviously aren't they aren't in the same place um, we've got you know a ton of light coming from from this direction from this this uh, window but our actual main light our key light on the uh, on the talent is coming from the opposite direction so 
this is a this is a problem if we can't um flip at least uh one of these things then we're never going to get a you know a, a truly or oh, it's not never it's going to be a lot harder for us to get a, uh, a a sort of convincing uh composite so uh, i'm gonna cheat because i know that i can just flip this i'm just gonna do a, a fast flip on this and already without me doing anything else like already that starts to look like she's in the um like she's in the scene a bit more Alrighty, so let's let's move on to another way of, of sorting out colors then and that's coming in and maybe doing a bit of color correction just to if not doing the final the final correction just doing a little bit of color correction just to sort of uh match match these two up so at least we, they feel like they're in the same sort of place um, if you're not using primat studio you can do color correction on a uh, on a separate um, with a separate effect but I am using Primat Studio so I have color correction built directly in so I can just come in and let's call, call her down a little bit so that's going to be calling her down uh, maybe making it a bit brighter definitely pumping the gamma up a little bit that's washed her out a little bit so let's add a little bit more contrast to her and maybe just desaturate a tad there we go so we want to keep her in the scene that works a little bit better do we need to do more let's have a look i'm just going to go through the uh, the different color channels with uh, alt one two three in after effects or you know there's, there's other ways of doing it down here uh just to, to take a little look just see if any of the color channels sort of pop out if their um if their contrast pops out a little bit too much yeah that's looking all right we do want her to have a little bit of contrast to make her sit a little bit further off the uh off the background yeah that's that's gonna do yeah already that's that's looking better so the next the next bit of the color that we're looking at it'll just do a little uh ram preview while we talk about that um if we if we play this through like it's it's actually starting to starting to work a little bit more but it does look as if we've just you know plonked her on the uh, on the background um because that's basically what we've done there's no interaction between foreground and background and that's something that's really important uh, and there's lots of ways of doing this but i think one of the uh, one of the sort of best ways is to just do a little bit of uh, of light wrap and what light wrap is is it's taking the background and taking the edge of our keyed element and sort of putting those together so it looks like the um, uh, reflected light from the background is just wrapping around uh, the, the the subject we've got and it helps to uh, well two things it helps to get rid of some of these harder edges um, and it also helps to make sh make it look as if they're sharing the the same sort of space the same sort of light um, and with, with Primat Studio there's a couple of ways of doing this or well, a couple of a couple of light wrap um, options I should say and when I first learned about light wrap uh, there wasn't really like a, uh, a a plugin that would do it you'd have to sort of uh, you know roll your own light wrap uh, with lots of different layers to to create the the little outline this is uh, this is a lot easier um, so I'm going to turn the light wrap on and I'm going to set my background which is going to be just the AA1 A001 which is my my background wall 
And let's make this, because we're in After Effects, we're able to make sure it's looking at that layer plus any effects that we've placed on it. And remember, we've placed a fast flipper effect on this. Not all um, software looks at, uh, you know, looks at that layer in the chain. So there, there's sometimes you might have to, uh, to get it to force it to look at, uh, at the layer you want. You might have to nest it or pre-compose it uh, to bounce that down. But we don't have to do that here, which is very nice. All right. So looking at this, the uh, with, when we've got the light wrap edge, we've got the wrap source, which is the background layer. We've got a softness and we've got lightness and width and all that sort of fun stuff. Let's see exactly what it's doing. So I'm going to go light wrap on black and I'm going to remember my keyboard shortcuts for After Effects at some point. I have spent too much time in other applications. So I've been going plus and minus to zoom in and out of the viewer all the time. It doesn't work in After Effects, Ben. As much as you wish it would, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, so with the with the softness, we're basically just you know blurring blurring out what's going on in the in the background a little bit. Uh, with the width, we're seeing how much of that light wraps in across the shoulder. And then we have ways of, of blending this together. Uh, I think, we, yeah, we'll definitely have time in a second to, to look at a different way of doing this one. Uh, but when, when you've got a background that's light, as we do here, uh, I would recommend we look at some of the lightening blend modes. So either something like lighten or even a screen. If you've got like a, a, a white or very bright um, uh, bright background here, like a screen is going to be really nice because it's going to make it look as if that light is just bouncing uh, off of that background and then just hitting and wrapping back around onto the shoulders. Uh, and well, let's look at the before and after. Blimp, bloom, blimp, bloom, lovely. Now, where if we've got this this sort of light wrap stuff or, or wherever we're actually looking at a, uh, a different layer to bring bring pixels back in from this is something we've also got to be on the, the lookout for we can end up eating away too much at those those fine hair details and if you've been with me through the whole of this you know how much i love my fine hair details that's why I'm going to use this mix with original. I pretty much always do this to, to some extent and just sort of mix back some of those original pixels back in again so that we get the best of both worlds. We get the that nice sort of lightening that we get from light bouncing off the background, wrapping around, but we also maintain those details there and we get a much more realistic look zoom out a little bit light wrap off light wrap on so you can see it's really helping to to sort of take out some of those harder edges so we just do that there and we'll just render that through nice and nice and fast render even though we're working on a, uh, a 4k clip because i didn't think that through um, and that's the joy of office hours. It's very, you know, we, you have an idea. If, if no one's brought you a, uh, a clip, uh, you have a little idea and you work it through. Because um, that's one of the other things we want to do. Like if you do have like problematic shots that you want to see worked on, uh, then, you know, just, just drop us a line either by uh, letting us know in the comments or we will at some point in the very near future, have a uh, an office hours email where you can email us uh, to let us know uh, how well you know what your problem is and how we can how we can look at your shot and your shot can be on office hours. Um, I'm going to take just a second. I'm going to come away from this. I'm not quite done with this shot, but I am going to come away from this shot because I want to do one other thing. Uh, I'm going to 
key something else. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, who's this? Who's this fella? Oh my god. Right, so this is a um this is something where like let's just try and do a quick key on this. Uh, Primat Studio, please. Thank you very much. Auto analyze. Uh, well, let's let's do, you know, do what I always do. Try and limit what it is that I'm trying to to key out. So whether that involves just doing a cropping sort of uh, cropping sort of garbage mask or an actual garbage mask. That'll do. It's uh, the nice thing about having Mocha built directly in, even if you're not using it for doing any sort of clever tracking stuff. We can just come in and, and set up like our rough garbage mask around there. Hmm. Hmm. I'm looking at myself. There we go. There we go. If this is still too much, then I'm just gonna whiz that out. There we go. Just make it make it big. Make it big. I don't need that bit. It's fine. And let's invert that, shall we? There we go. And we're just I'm just gonna do a quick cleanup on the background. Right, here is you know what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Uh Bring that there. Boom. Yeah, here, it's going to be very unlikely that these two things are ever going to match together. Uh, the reason being is that this was shot with a very specific kind of lighting in mind, which doesn't quite fit to generic white background. Um, one thing I do like about it, though, is that we do have that, you know, nice side light coming in over here. Um, but this was this was much more um you know suitable for where we got it got to have something something dark here yeah let's use the one we were looking at the balloons with balloons bubbles yeah if you missed my glorious bubbles earlier then uh pop back have a little watch let's freeze this this is all going to be very quick and dirty so i mean this this is probably we're probably going to be able to color correct the uh like this a little bit better into the into the background there uh push that in And here we did a light wrap. Well, let's actually blur this out so it's not completely clear what's happening to it. There we go. That's going to be a bit better. Yeah, so here if we did that same light wrap that we did on the, um, on the girl a second ago. Uh, let's set up our light wrap, which is on this one, and effect some masks. Um, if I came in and did... Let's do a uh, let's light wrap spill. Let's do light wrap edge. Yes. Yeah. So here, if we did like the um, let's do a big wide one here. If we did like a lighten over the top of this one, that's probably not going to be nice enough. So it's probably going to accentuate the fact that we've got you know a sort of lit edge going on there. So if we've got a dark background, we might want to go for one of the sort of more darker areas, whether that's going to be darken or multiply, something like that. Uh, we can even come in and we have like a, a color correction, well, lightness control here. So we can sort of just try and blend or sort of, yeah, blend that back in a little bit more. Obviously the mix with the original. 
So that's, let's see the, yeah, without. And then with. Right, so even with the, you know, the dodgiest, the dodgiest key in the world, uh, that's that's even helping to, to, to fix that edge up. So if I spent more than seven seconds on it, actually might look all right. Uh, but let's get back to our main one quickly. We do have the clock running. Yeah, where are we at? Okay, yeah, so, so this is actually fitting in pretty nicely now. Uh, so we've got our uh, original key. We've got our spill suppression turned on. So the uh, the secondary spill suppression, which is in the key and blend mode here, uh, under spill remover, lovely one. Uh, we have our color correction turned on as well. We have the light wrap turned on, and that's helping to pull things in. Um, one other thing that I, I think we could we could try to have a look at because it, it will only take a few seconds and either work or it won't. Uh, let's come to an area where we've got nice hair. We might not even need this, but this is always always good to, to have a little look at. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, primary map. Yeah, the other thing we've got uh, built into Primate Studio is the edge cleaner, which I think we can never really underestimate. Because it's a way of, of helping us bring back in like a lot of really nice uh like color details or edge details um this is generally part of a like if you, if you go if you go too too wide with it um you can end up uh over on the the edges here you can end up sort of eating into your eating into your key so this is this is usually part of a, a, a sort of way where you'd you'd have like a core mat that we talked about earlier uh, and then do the edge details over the top of this. Um, so that's, but that's kind of nice. I do like the, that's a nice way of just sort of helping to clean up some of those details there. We might not even need this um, with the, um, all of the, the color correction stuff we've got. Uh, maybe. I kind of like that. Yeah, maybe. Oh, let's hide, hide the UI for a second then, shall we? So I don't do errant clicks. There we go. All right, so the, yeah, the final thing uh, to get this actually working properly uh, is having some way to, to tie everything together. Um, so, and this, this is something that's, that's also overlooked quite a lot. Um, especially when, you know, it's, it's just one person on background. Uh, you want to have something to, to, to make sure that everything feels, feels right still. So whether that's like having some, something in the foreground that covers everything, uh, and that could be a, um, or oh, in this case, it wouldn't, wouldn't make any different, you know, wouldn't make any sense to have like a smoke effect. But we could have like a lighting effect of some sort. Um, what should we do? What should we do? Maybe. Do I want a spotlight? Well, let's 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 do a spotlight. It's going to be too much, and it's going to look stupid. But it's going to give me. Hopefully, it's going to give you the idea of what we're trying to do. So let's take the intensity all the way down. Bring the ambient up, ambient light, please. Thank you very much. So even just like a little something here, let's definitely get that falling off a lot. So something that is, it's silly and it doesn't work in this particular context, but we do have, by having like another effect over the top, we're helping to sort of tie tie those things in together so we've got you know a shared a shared element that goes over the top of both of them 
Um, it doesn't have to be like a light or any anything like that. It could just be like a, a, a color effect. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pop into color fuse. So this this a sapphire effect. This isn't a uh, continuum effect, but it could be. You know, I just I I'm happy. I'm happy when I'm in I'm in color fuse. Uh, but it's just yeah, basically to show you that anything that we've got to just tie those two together a little bit. Do I want a color pop? Oh, here's here's where I've got the agony of choice of uh, of having too many. Too many presets. Uh, let's just yeah bring bring something else in here. Maybe something that pops, like a commercial pop of some sort. Ah, color cut. Co yeah, color contrast smack. There we go. You had me at color contrast. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. It's just basically something to bring those two together. Is it going to be this in particular? Ah, probably not. But is it going to be? Is it going to be something? Yes, absolutely. So we can we can sort of see how how big a difference that's gonna that's gonna make to sort of pop that into place. Just the importance. Of uh, of color, when it comes to uh, to keying, is is something that's that's often overlooked. Like people spend so much time thinking about uh, pulling a pulling a key, pulling the, the the you know the the biggest key, the best key, getting rid of all of the green. When instead, what they you know what you should what you should be thinking about is like is the key going to be sufficient, along with something like a bit of color correction, a bit of light wrap. Uh, to just sort of bring those uh, those elements together again, is that going to actually make a uh, a better, uh, more convincing composite than just sort of coming in and and having like no no green in there at all, but just when she moves her hands, we end up with like tiny tiny stick fingers instead of nicely motion blurred fingers. Cool. I do have like a, there's a lot of other a lot of other stuff to to take a look at. I mean, we've got like a similar thing here, which is the same technique. Actually, it's the same clip, just bumped over the top of a different background. Let's have a little look there. Boom. Let's fit that to hundred percent, so you can just see. That's the same idea. Just slightly different color, color correction on there, and you've got a very different looking, you know, very different looking clip, and that should fit fit nicely in whatever you whatever you're trying to do. Um, cool, and that's that's really you know that's really basically that's my my time up, um, and that's just really what I wanted to to talk mainly about. Like we got the right having the right tools for the job. So not always, where are we? Let's have a little look. Yeah, not always using blend modes to blend stuff back that was shot on black. Um, don't try and do too much. You know, when you're coming to keying, limit the area you're keying limit the scope of what you're trying to key and just get it right. Um, you know, don't don't always o you know, over key, uh, sorry, not over key, under key uh, can often be better than, than over keying. Uh, splitting into multiple segments if you need to, but you know, if you can, if you can get away with having everything on one layer, you know, there's a, there's a strong part of me that says yes, please. Uh, and also, yeah, not not overkeying because of colours. Like getting getting the colours right is the um, is the secret. So 
making sure that when you're shooting, you're matching lighting together wherever possible. If you can't, you're in you're in trouble. Um, or you have to do lots of little tricks afterwards. But also using things like color correction, light wrap, uh, and spill suppression to uh, you know to to hide any sort of little mistakes that might be getting made on uh, on your key. Cool. Well, if you've got any uh, any other last questions now, uh, then please drop them into chat. Uh, if you have any ideas that you of uh, of topics you want to see uh, in the uh, in the, in later office hours, then also drop them into chat. If on the other hand you have a tricky tricky shot that you want us to have a little look at, it doesn't have to be uh, keying. Uh, we could be doing some uh, roto work. We could be doing some particle work. You know, we're uh, we're always looking for more interesting footage to uh, to work on. Uh, then just drop those into um, uh, into the comments for me as well. So, oh, we've got an email address. So email us at info at boriseffects.com. Make sure you put office hours as the subject line and we will we will get back to you. See, look, look how easy that was when we uh, when we knew what we were doing. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for for joining me for today. Um, I will uh, definitely see you on another Office Hours soon, but uh, we'll be back with uh, Office Hours again next week. Different time, different bat channel. No, same same bat channel, different bat time uh, with another one of our very, very fun Boris Effects hosts. All right, so everyone, thanks for now. I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.